Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Nice. Employers routinely take advantage of people's goodwill. This is wage theft, no matter how you slice it. But it's also funny how they rather lose money on avoidable fines instead of paying someone a little bit more. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Converted from salary to hourly. Best decision ever. I work for a mid-sized fashion company with around 150 retail stores nationwide as a maintenance and safety coordinator. Four months into the job, my manager quit and I picked up everything and was doing fine on my own for years and I was the only person in charge of maintaining the stores and the alarm systems in all the stores. I did get a pay bump, but not a promotion in title. I put my contact number on every store's emergency contact list just in case the primary contacts, usually the store managers, don't pick up their phones in case of emergencies. And the store managers almost always refused to pick up calls during off hours, so my phone would ring at least two to three times every night. 99% of the times are false alarm, usually caused by window brake sensors getting tripped by vibration from a big truck passing by or a leaf hitting the window. I hated it, but had to do it because if no one on the emergency contact list picks up the phone, the alarm company automatically calls the police for dispatch and there are penalties for false alarms, ranging from $50 to $200 per incident after two or three freebies. Varies by location. In 2017, Department of Labor passed a law requiring all employees making under a certain amount of dollars to be converted to hourly so they can earn overtime. My salary was $800 short of making the cut. I brought it up with HR stating that an hourly schedule would actually interfere with my duties and an $800 pay raise would make everything easier. And HR simply said, well, that's too bad. We can't do anything about it at the moment. Well, okay. After that conversation, I put my phone on mute and stopped caring about anything outside of my 9 to 5. In hindsight, life was actually so much easier and better that way and not sure why I even wanted to stay on salary. Months go by without any serious issues except for the penalties for false alarms starting to pile up. One day, accounting and operations brought me into the office asking what those costs were I told them what they were, and operations sent out a memo reminding all store managers that safety is of critical importance and they have to pick up calls from alarm companies. No one bothered asking why there was a surge in these additional costs, and I didn't care enough to remind them that it was because of me. A few more months go by, and one morning I woke up to almost 20 missed calls on my cell. Apparently, one of our Florida stores was broken into the night before at around 3 a.m., the store manager tried to get a hold of me because I was the one in charge of requesting and dispatching vendors for things like emergency board up. After an hour of trying to get a hold of me, she eventually started calling up everybody on the hierarchy for help, and I had six missed calls from the senior VP of operations alone. Eventually, the director of constructions was able to get a crew to board up the store, but that was almost three hours later, and everyone was royally pissed. Unsurprisingly, the second I stepped into the office, I was called into the office with all the senior management and HR and were asked why I was not there to take care of it, and I simply replied, because I already clocked out. The senior VP of operations was obviously not pleased with that answer and said it was my duty and I needed to be on standby at all times to handle these situations even during off hours, to which I stated, oh, so I should be on call then. In that case, I'll have to work with accounting to get properly compensated for my on-call hours once we have a schedule established. The room went silent, and nothing came out of the rather short meeting. Later that afternoon, HR called me into the office again asking whether I'd like to become salaried again with a pay bump. I said I'd take the pay bump, but I'd rather stay hourly and walked out. They didn't give me the pay bump. Edit. Sorry, I didn't provide what happened next. So, here's some closure. I was put on call for a few weeks because it was summer at the time of the incident and HVAC systems kept failing over the weekends in our Florida stores, and again, I was the one to dispatch vendors to fix them. Money was great during that period, lol. Eventually, the director of constructions was put on as the emergency contact for off-hour issues, and he absolutely hated it. 
I left the company last year. They had to scramble to get a replacement and hired a maintenance supervisor with an MBA in political science, but no related experience. My last contact from the company was the supervisor asking me what the login credentials were for all the 150 stores alarm systems. I didn't reply. Another example of Pennywise pound foolish on the part of companies who think that dismissing the recommendations of those underneath them is a good idea. And our second story. Harassed in the aisles, mistaken for store employee, and subjected to inappropriate advances. This happened to me a few years ago, not too long after I moved to my current neighborhood. I was working two jobs and just got out of one of them. I was wearing a coat from my full-time job, a very bright blue fleece with the agency's logo embroidered on the left side, zipped up with khaki slacks and a bright pink polo shirt. Yeah, our uniforms were a hot mess. I went to the local grocery store that at the time the uniform was a primary blue polo, black apron, or smock. It happened to be a rare evening off from my second job, same grocery store company, different location, and I was picking up a few groceries for dinner and a celebratory snack for having the night off, a.k.a. ice cream. I was examining these SpaghettiOs, don't judge me, when this guy comes towards me. I gave that Midwestern polite half-smile as I moved my cart, with big old purse sitting on top to the side, and nodded for him to pass so I could examine the offerings of gourmet canned pasta. Again, don't judge me. Once I moved over, I turned toward the shelf, not looking at him. Him, where's the taco stuff? Me, looking up in surprise. Um, I don't know. I think I saw an employee in the next aisle over. Him, looking disgusted. Don't give me that. You know what you're doing. I know you stock it here. Where's the taco stuff? Me, I don't really know. I don't. Him, getting impatient, rolling his eyes. Look, I know you're not stupid. Where's the GD taco stuff? Me, I don't work here. Go ask an employee. Him. I don't want to ask an employee. I'm asking you. Now, where's the MF taco stuff? Frantically, I look around. I saw people at either end of the aisle, and as soon as they saw a large six-foot-plus man screaming at me, a smaller woman, they all noped out of there right quick. Fortunately, we were both in view of the aisle signs right above our heads. I looked up, turned around, and pointed. Me. See? Taco. Right there. On the sign. Next aisle over. Now go away and stop bothering me. Him, grinning, body language immediately switching from imposing to sleazy. See, now was that so hard? You should try to smile more. Did you know you're cute when you're angry? He looks me up and down, puts the tip of his tongue in the corner of his mouth. You know, if I weren't married, I'd see if I could take you out for dinner. Me, recoiling inside with disgust. He laughed as he went away to wherever he came from. I'm ashamed to say that I grabbed my gourmet pasta and practically ran to the registers. I didn't get the other treats I'd planned to pick up that evening. At the time, I didn't have a lot of confidence, and my ex-husband was making sure of that. We were in the process of a divorce, and he's a master at gaslighting, so this experience really threw me off. Had this happen a lot more recently, there are so many more things I could do, like point to signs, shout, make a scene, put him in his place, etc., I think this guy just saw me as an easy target and went for it. Especially once he discovered his mistake. He was a classic misogynist with no social aptitude, a chip on his shoulder, and a vastly, and clearly, overrated idea of his own importance and attractiveness. I'm glad you escaped a situation that drained you to the point where you accepted his abuse. I rejoice that you're stronger now. Good for you. And our last story towed Karen's car because she reported me to our property manager. I, 25-year-old male, was doing an oil change on my car in the back parking lot of my apartment complex. I wasn't in anyone's way, and it takes maybe 30 minutes. I clean up after myself. It's technically not allowed, but who gives a F? I'm paying $3,000 a month. I'm not the only one who does it either. I've seen others spending hours on their cars out there. Anyway, this older lady, I don't know, 70s, moved upstairs above me. She's a Karen, constantly in everyone's business and complaining about the dumbest crap. She walked all the way over to me with her crusty white dog and asked if I know it's against the rules to do mechanics on your car in the lot. I'm like, oh, no, I had no idea. 
She angrily said she'll report me and called me disrespectful. I just ignored her and finished up. I see her speed walking over to the property manager's office. Next day, I get a fine for $20 wedged in my door, saying they received an anonymous report I was working on my car. I was PO'd. The property manager, Dan, 40s male, had rode over on his golf cart to chat with me while I was working on it in the past. He's very chill and doesn't care about most of the policies, unless you're committing a crime or actively disturbing the peace. He apologized, said he unfortunately has to do it once someone puts an official complaint in, since his bosses will see it. They'll make a big stink if it's not dealt with. He told me he personally doesn't care. He suggested I do it late at night when it's past Karen's bedtime. I was kind of fed up with her at this point. I asked if I could make an official report that someone has a car on their lot that has had expired tags for the last month. Dan started laughing and was like, oh man, really? That's devious, brother. I said, yeah, put that crap in. Our state gives the right for private property owners to tow any car with expired tags without notice. The car was towed the same day, and she flipped the F out. It was hilarious. The cherry on top was Dan informing her he couldn't do anything because they had received an official complaint. I and a lot of neighbors are nosy and watch the whole debacle outside, I piped up and said it's unfortunate how some people need to learn to mind their own business and chill with the reporting. I think she had it coming. She was constantly reporting people for the dumbest things. I mean, she screamed at little kids for coloring chalk on the sidewalk since it's against the rules. She also reported a teenager for keeping his bicycle on his balcony instead of the bike rack. It gets rusty out there with the rain. He's had it up there for years and never was a problem before she moved in. Edit. Just to defend Dan a bit here, he does enforce rules if you're actively effing around. Like if kids are out here drawing slurs on the sidewalk, yeah, he's going to do something. But little girls drawing rainbows and flowers during their summer vacation? Of course not. Who effing cares? Except Karen, obviously. She isn't acting very neighborly by reporting everyone for not following stupid rules. She didn't follow the rules either, so she had what's coming. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.